Hello, my name's Ian McMillan, and I'm a poet and performer. And today, we're going to talk about writing for well-being, and specifically, writing poems for well-being. We're going to have a go at maybe writing a poem together and seeing how it turns out. The first thing to say is that we don't need any equipment. People assume that you need a pen, a piece of paper, a notebook, perhaps a, a fancy fountain pen or a quill. You don't need any of those. They're useful, of course. All you need really is yourself in the world. Yourself either sitting in the house or wandering about in the world. A lot of the poems that I write begin in my head, begin with words and actually begin in spaces that haven't got words in them, perhaps an image or a memory or a tune. And that is writing poems when you're thinking about that and just odd things pop into your head or you overhear something or you see something. That's where the poetry starts and that's where we take charge of it. And that's why it makes you feel good to think I am in charge of this language. I am making the language do as it's told. Today though, I brought along my notebook. I do like notebooks, I love notebooks. I always have my rubber band around the notebook because I pretend to myself that I keep my ideas tightly packed in the notebook. Now I've got to tell you that usually I prefer a notebook without lines. This one's got lines, it was a present, so I'm using it. But I do like an unlined notebook because somehow then the ideas can be freer. Things can happen with the ideas. My writing as you'll see, isn't very neat. And I don't think that matters. You know, your writing can be what you like. Also, I've got to tell you, we're in a spelling and grammar amnesty zone today. Sometimes people get a bit worried about their spelling and their grammar. I'm here to tell you that you don't have to be. Don't worry. The spelling and grammar coppers aren't going to come and arrest us. All right. People say, I don't want to break the rules of grammar. I say, they're not rules, they're conventions. So please don't worry about that. So how are we going to begin writing this poem? And I'm writing this poem, I'm making this film on a, a damp Monday morning. It's a damp day. And I thought, right, what I'm going to do is, and I suggest we all have a go at this, is I'm going to make something happen in the next 15 minutes. I said that to myself this morning. When I go up to the bus stop, I caught the 837 bus into Doncaster. I thought, I am going to see something from this bus that I will write about. You're thinking I'm making this up, but I'm not. And I think you have to be like a little satellite dish. You have to be available, available for stuff. So that's what I was. So I got on the bus and it was raining. And when I got on the bus, there was a girl sat on the bus and she was playing with her hair. She was pulling her hair and twisting it. And I thought, oh. I wonder if that, I wonder if that would make a poem or something. She wasn't on for very long. She got off at the next stop and I kept her in the back of my mind. She's still there, you know, she's still twirling that hair. Then we went down a few more stops and this is true. It sounds made up, but it's not. There was a guy at the bus stop who didn't want this bus, he wanted the next one. So he waved the bus on as they do. So he waved the bus on and he carried a backpack, and in the backpack was a rose. A beautiful rose was sticking out the backpack. And as he waved the bus on, his wave changed. And it became, he kind of waved at the bus. So I waved back, actually, from the other side of the bus. I waved. And I thought, goodness me. We've only gone a mile, and I've seen something incredible. I think you do, if you make yourself available for stuff. You see things. So I'd seen two things already. I'd seen this young girl twirling her hair and I'd seen this fella with his rose in his backpack. I'm not suggesting that every day we'll see something that magical, but we'll always see something. I'm an early riser and in the mornings when I feel most creative. And so I go for my early morning stroll. I spring out of bed at five o'clock and I go for a walk at about 20 past five just around the village where I live, I tweet about what I see, and it's always the same walk. And I try to train myself to see different things on the walk. Always the same walk, always different things. So today, for example, somebody put a bright green teddy bear in a window. 
I, I wrote that down. And there was a puddle, and I thought, it just popped into me, and I thought, all puddles, no matter what shape they are, are shaped like puddles. And it's easy, in a sense, for me to do that, because I do it all the time, but that's what we have to train ourselves to do, just to be aware. So let's have a think about this. So I'm going to write down the words, man with a rose in his backpack. And it was such a simple thing. It was one of those roses that people sometimes come around giving out in pubs or trying to sell you in a pub. Man with a rose in his backpack. And as soon as I saw it, it made me feel good. You know, I thought, where's he going? Why has he got a rose in his backpack? Is he going to give that rose to somebody? Or has he been given that rose? So I then started to think about my dad, actually. And my dad loved roses. My dad was a romantic fella. And uh, he would often bring my mother roses. My mother wasn't very romantic. She was very practical. And we'd go, oh, not more roses. And also, to be honest with you, I'm allergic to them. So they made me sneeze. But my dad was a very romantic man. So I'm gonna, I've got the man with the rose in his backpack. And I've got my dad. I'm just writing this down. My dad with a rose in his hand. And what I'm finding, and you'll find too, is that ideas lead on to other ideas. So I saw the fella with the rose in his backpack, and it made me think about my dad, and my dad with his roses. And it made me think about my wife, who likes gardening, and she likes roses. But so I've written down this line, man with a rose in his backpack. And that's got a rhythm to it, hasn't it? Man with a rose in his backpack. It's not a conventional rhythm, but you can see how it's a rhythmic phrase. And the reason that is, is that we all speak in rhythm. Everybody talks in rhythm. We, we do. And then that's why that led fairly easily, to be honest with you, to the next line, which I hadn't thought of before. But man with a rose in his backpack, my dad with a rose in his hand. And I think with this kind of poem, you would say it over and over again. You'd say it over and over again. This happened to me this morning, I would say, 08.50. So, at 08.50 tomorrow morning, you look out your window, or get on a bus, or go for a little stroll, and at 08.50, just have a look what you see. You'll see something, something amazing, I'm sure. People say, does a poem have to rhyme? And they don't have to. Some people like rhyme. Some people love it and it makes them feel fantastic to think of a rhyme. And often the rhyme can be the engine of a poem and it makes the poem move and it makes the poem work. So I might have a, a go at making a rhyme here. So man with a rose in his backpack, my dad with a rose in his hand. So backpack is an interesting word. We can think of a word that might rhyme with that, come back. I thought, would he still be there when I come back on the bus later on this afternoon? Man with a rose in his backpack, my dad with a rose in his hand. Will he still have the rose when I come back? Will he still have the rose when I come back? Rhyme does not have help me to think. You don't have to rhyme, but it does not have help me to think. Will he still have the rose when I come back? So we've got man with a rose in his backpack, my dad with a rose in his hand. Will he still have the rose when I come back? And that's interesting, because who is the he? Is it my dad? Or is it this fella? Or have they somehow become the same chap? I don't know. Man with a rose in his backpack, my dad with a rose in his hand. Will he still have the rose when I come back? Now we've got hand. Can we have a rhyme for hand? I bet you can all think of loads. Rhyme is interesting. If you can't think of any, there's plenty of rhyming apps on your phone. Rhyme is not hard, but it, it helps you to think, as I keep saying. I was thinking the word understand is a nice word, you know. Just write that down. Sometimes you just have to write a word down. Man with a rose in his backpack, my dad with a rose in his hand. Will he still have the rose when I come back? I'm to, I'm, I thought I might make it a bit mysterious now. Poems are great because they can be mysterious. In a way that I can't understand. I'm going to write that down. In a way that I can't understand. So this poem has gone from being something that actually happened to me this morning, about 10 to 9. And it's gone into a thinking about my dad. It's gone into a journey, only to the 
from Barnsley to Doncaster on the bus and back, but it's still a journey. And then at the end, it's a bit mysterious here so far. Man with a rose in his backpack, my dad with a rose in his hand. Will he still have the rose when I come back in a way that I can't understand? Maybe I'll ask another question there. That's a nice thing about poems. You can ask questions in him. Will the rose... Now, if he's going to have this rose, he stood at the bus stop all day, waving buses past. The rose will have started to droop, I think. Will the rose... Droop's a terrible word for a rhyme, I've got to tell you. Don't want droop. Troop, croop, there's not a lot. Will the rose have begun... Started is a better word. Will the rose have started to fade? Will the man have walked away? Two questions there. Man with a rose in his backpack. My dad with a rose in his hand. Will he still have the rose when I come back in a way that I can't understand? Will the rose have started to fade? Will the rose, will the man have wandered away? I'm going to put wandered just for the rhythm. Will the man have wandered away? And that's how I build a poem, you know, and, and everybody does it differently. Everybody. You know, but that's how it begins for me. Just this, I see something, I start to shape it. I feel satisfied when I can think of a rhyme that works, but it doesn't have to rhyme. It really doesn't have to rhyme. And it becomes magical. The thing that I saw, a fellow with a rose, becomes magical. And it, it starts to transform itself into poetry. And because of that, it's making me feel good. It's making, honestly, it is. It's making me feel that on a drizzly Monday morning, I've seen something and I've made something out of it. So what I recommend is that we have a go at thinking about what might happen next in this poem, but also we have a go at going out at a certain time or looking out your window at a certain time, having some ideas, writing them down if you want. If you don't want to put them on a paper, you can text them to yourself. You can speak them into your uh, voice memo. And what does happen is, once you've had an idea and started writing bits down, people say, right, I'm going to write now for the next four hours. I say, no, I don't, I don't. you can if you want, but have a minute. Just write for a minute. Have a writing minute every day. Ten to nine could be your writing minute. If you get up late, half past eleven could be your writing minute. And like I said before, it doesn't have to be actual writing. It can be thinking about it. And then maybe just start to write something. Make it sort of a habit. So that with me it's a habit. I write every day. I tweet every day. Make it into a habit. And then it'll become something that you do. That makes you feel alright. And the other thing is, you never have to finish the poem. You can leave it half done. Nobody minds. You never have to show it to anybody. You can keep it for yourself, or you can show it to people if you like. You can ask people what they think of it, and they can help you out with it. The great thing about poetry is, it, it does what we do anyway. It's about language, it's about thinking, and it's about memory, and it's about ideas. So, that's your task. It goes, this next bit goes, will the rose have started to fade? Will the man have wandered away? So if you can complete that, That'd be great. And also, I'd kind of forgotten, although she was still there, the girl on the bus who was twirling her hair. Is there some connection between that girl and that fellow with the rose? And is that why he waved at the bus? If this was a story or a film, he'd be waiting there for her to come back on the bus, but she got off earlier. So there's all kinds of possibilities there. And maybe that's what this is about, possibilities. You know, maybe that really is what this is about. So do have a go. You don't have to have a rubber band. That's just me. Not everybody needs a rubber band. The rubber band of verse. You don't need it.